What's up, cardboard friends? Today we've got a sizzling show where we review the hottest players in the sports card market as well as the coldest players. And I make an official proclamation to the world that specific players are hobby dead. Now, who is hobby dead? Stick around and find out. Now, I know you've been asking, Ty Guy, where have the hot lists been? You know those hot lists like Beckett used to put in their magazines? Calm down, calm down, I've been busy, we've been making content, today you get what you asked for. Now this is not the hot list showing the top 10 or top 20 hottest individual cards like you're used to, that would be a hot sheet. This is the old school hottest player list. So if you go to a card show or are curious who is generating the highest gross dollars, the biggest hobby buzz, who everybody is asking for and who everybody wants to buy, this is that list. But before we do, of course, I'm gonna begin asking for some likes and some subscribes so we can push this content forward to all the other little cardboard friends still stuck in the matrix waiting to be unplugged. And promise me, if you don't, you are a rusty cunt who was actually a big league ball player, so take that as a compliment. Now, the methods for this analysis is that I use eBay's Terapeak Data Research Tool, and I've put together a list of over 160 players that I track and have analyzed their card markets for the past three years. In this specific analysis, I'm looking at first, gross sales on eBay during the first quarter of 2024. Secondly, comparing that to gross sales in Q4 of 2023, for each of those cohorts, I've rank ordered each player for each respective list. And a third view that I will be showing is who is the biggest risers, meaning who jumped the most number of spots from Q4 of 2023 to Q1 of 2024. And of course, conversely, I also review the weakest performers and who has dropped the most spots. Now, at the end of the video, I talk about the pros and cons of this type of analysis, but one con that viewers have pointed out previously is that this data does not take into account any auction house sales, which is true. But come on, eBay is literally the largest marketplace for cards and can serve as a more than adequate reflection of the market conditions. When looking at a population sample size and making assertions on an overall market, eBay sales data is more than enough data to make a reasonable conclusion. Lastly, it's worth noting that for Q1 2024, I began removing specific search terms to ensure that the data elements and results are cleaner. So now that we have that out of the way, let's jump into it. So the first list, this is the hot list. The 10 hottest, most in-demand players are, da -da 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 -da, one, Michael Jordan. Of course, no surprise, you all saw that last year. Whenever we concluded 2023, MJ topped the list. Secondly, perhaps again, no surprise, Victor Wimbenyama, 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 Mama, Mama, Mama. Third, Patrick Mahomes, Patty Cakes. Fourth, Kobe Bryant. Fifth, Shohei Otani. Sixth, surprisingly, Joe Burrow. Seventh, the Kang. Eight, Brock Purdy. Nine, Tom Brady. And 10, ascending, CJ Stroud. So you can see to the right, the highest gross sales to the right. And I've annualized these sales by multiplying these quarterly numbers by a factor of four to the far right. So you can see the annualized sales of what this would project out to. Interestingly enough, five of the top 10 players on this list are football players, all of which are QBs. There's also four basketball players on the list and only one baseball player. No hockey or soccer players demanded a large enough gross sales number to populate the top 10. One could argue by looking at this list that the NFL is the top sports card market, even over a sport like baseball. I do not believe that this is true, but rather more so that dollars are concentrated in a fewer number of players in football, whereas baseball has a significantly larger volume of players that remain hobby relevant and have active and thriving markets, just not such that the markets will demand a top 10 player unless you are the top player like a Shohei Otani. Additionally, it's worth pointing out that Michael Jordan maintains the top spot by a large margin. The combined markets of Kobe Bryant and LeBron James still do not add up to the gross sales of Michael Jordan and what he continues to command. And this is coming from a player who does not actively have cards being produced outside of a few garbage unlicensed sets like Upper Deck Goodwin or Metal Universe and all the other junk that they put out. Now, compare that list to the list that we saw in Q4 of 2023 to the end of the year. Now, I don't have the gross sales for each player listed here because the methods for pulling the data did change as I excluded some search terms for the 2024 list. Now, I don't want any viewers out there to begin making any inferences about what they are seeing without acknowledging that the methods have changed for how I pulled this data. Very similarly, it's a very similar list, but one of the biggest names on here that is not present on the 2024 list is Trevor Lawrence, and boy, has his market crashed. 
Now, perhaps most interestingly, this is the list of players who saw the biggest rise from last quarter to this quarter. Again, this is a rank ordered rise. It does not necessarily mean these players had the largest jump in total dollars spent, the largest jump in percentage of dollars spent, although that would likely correlate pretty strongly to this list. This is simply a rank ordered view of where those players stood at the end of 2023 compared to where they stand now in terms of their ranking 1 to 60 of the total amount of hobby dollars being spent on their cards and memorabilia. Surprisingly, Victor is not on this list, and the reason why is because he already finished strong in 2023. Even despite having a limited number of releases to finish 2023, but make no mistake, there was a lot of hobby dollars going to Victor Wimbenyama. The biggest leapers by far are going to be CJ Stroud, followed by Jackson Holiday, Lamar Jackson, who I predict will fall off of this list by the next time that I create it. Jackson had a lot of hobby buzz during the playoffs and capping off an MVP season. Ellie makes this list likely because MLB is now whoring out his rookie logo cards, which should have released last year. Ellie is not a rookie this year, but the MLBPA is going to whore his name out, which is sad because he's a horrible player, at least in my opinion. And of course, Jason Dominguez is getting the same type of treatment. Interestingly, Joe DiMaggio jumped up this list, and that could have been because somebody in the last quarter may have dumped a huge vintage collection online, and that could have caused his gross sales number to jump. Jordan Love hype is also in full swing as the QB speculation game for NFL offseason is kicked off into high gear. Expect that to ramp up for other players as more speculative hobby dollars get thrown at QBs not named Mahomes, which is basically a guarantee that they're going to lose on their bets. Let's take a look at some of the markets of some new players added to the list, but based on total value, yes, some of these players could have been tracked previously, uh, but now all of their markets are worth inclusion and also worth tracking as four of these players are now in the top 30 of gross spend for all players across all markets. So pretty sizable jumps. Again, most of these players have active rookie cards or college cards that are being released uh, in new products. So as that dries up, it remains to be seen how that impacts overall collectability and transaction volume and sales. But these players are absolutely hobby relevant. The list is led by Anthony Richardson, who is seeing a bit of a, an uptick, not only due to the new NFL releases, but some off-season QB buzz beginning to pick up. Bedard, of course, is going to continue to grow as more Upper Deck hockey gets released. Upper Deck has already flooded the market with Young Guns rookies, so expect that market cap to continue to grow for another quarter or even until EPAC comes out. And of course, Caitlin Clark continues to capture America's hearts and smash women's basketball ratings and records. Yes, unfortunately, she did lose the national championship game, but uh, it did record a record viewing. One of the most watched basketball games in the past five years with 18 million views. She's also going to be the main selling point for all fanatics, university lineups and future Panini lineups once she gets her WNBA cards. So now let's look at the biggest hobby losers. Again, this is looking at gross sales. First off, now, Mac Jones' market was crashing for a while, and it wasn't really good at the end of 2023, but at this point, I think we can officially make the call. Mac Jones' market is officially hobby dead. Little Mac Daddy, the baby goat, is now going to be carrying the jock strap for Trevor Lawrence down in Jacksonville, Florida, and aside from an injury to the Prince, Mackey ain't sniffing the field, and with more exciting prospects coming through the QB hamster wheel, Mac has no room in the hobby anymore to maintain any semblance of relevancy. Dump what you have. But old Mac isn't the only one who's hobby dead. We've got two more names to identify based on this data, and this sorry sports card investor, Jeff Wilson, it's going to be your boy Desmond Ritter. Now, kudos to Jeff. You've already owned up to the mistake. You recently made a video settling and, and claiming that you lost $30,000 investing in Desmond Ritter. Again, boys and girls, never invest. You'll only lose. And by buying five-figure cards of Desmond Ritter, he could have poured that into patty cakes or any other long-term blue chipper, but instead he rolled the dice like a bunch of people are doing now on bad quarterback investments on bad franchises and spent a lot of money doing so. But now, I think it's safe to say, We've all seen enough of Desmond, and I think we can officially conclude Ritter is hobby dead. That brings us to the last hobby dead declaration. Now, this could have been an, an official declaration last year, but I just thought of this segment, and I think it's a good one. So now that we are putting this down on record, we are definitely saying that Zach Wilson's hobby status has died. Now, have to admit, the boy has got some good taste in those dime angel mamas that he has notoriously been chasing, so it ain't like little Zachy's gonna be struggling and living on the streets. 
But while Zach is trying to bang your mom, just remember his hobby stardom has officially died. That brings us to the end of the whole video, and I do want to point out that, again, this data is highly skewed towards players actively being included in new releases, such as the current crop of rookies for each given sport, but you can see how the demand for those types of players does change and vary within each of those co cohorts, such as a Skeens versus a Linkford, a Stroud versus a Richardson, or the GOAT-type players like a Jordan and a Kobe. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Let me know if this is content that you like, and we will see you next time.